Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to do a comparison of the new state-of-the-art YOLO NAS model. It has really good performance as we're going to see. In this video here, we're going to compare it with the other YOLO V8 model. It is still a very good model and it also has some advantages over YOLO NAS. Still, we're going to cover like all of it throughout this video here. We're going to see how we can act like use it in code. So we're going to open up the two models with a live webcam stream here in Python. So we're basically just going to create the two Python scripts open up, use a pre-trained model and see the inference results directly from the pre-trained models. We're both going to look at the inference speed and also the performance. And then I'm going to talk about some of the benefits, disadvantages and also advantages of the two models. So I already have a video about YOLO NAS and also YOLO V8 where I cover like everything from training it from scratch, how we can use our own custom data set, go in, we have a Google Colab notebook. We basically just run it through, import a data set, train these models here, and then we're going to export them and use it in our own custom Python scripts. So all I have videos about both of those models. So definitely go in and check those videos out if you're interested in, in learning how you can actually like go in, train these models on a custom data set and use them in your own applications and projects. So when I jump into Visual Studio Code, I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually like set up these models. They have some really nice frameworks around the models. We can basically just go in and choose what model and what type of model we want to use. So first of all, here we have this YOLO V8 model. I already have videos about those, but in this video, we're just going to run the two models. We're going to see the results, compare them, and then I'm going to talk about like some of the pros and also some of the cons of using these two models. So just because a new version of the YOLO models come out, it doesn't mean that we can use the previous versions. They're still very good in some specific scenarios and also for data sets and also for different tasks as we're going to talk about in just a second. But here we can basically just see that from Ultralytics, we can basically just go in and pip install Ultralytics we can then import the, the YOLO class here from Autolytics. We can then we can basically just go in and then create an instance of our class. We can specify what pre-trained model we want to use. Here we're going to use the YOLO V8 small model. You can also take the medium model, large model, extra large model, and so on. But in this video here, we're just going to choose um, the small one here. We create an instance of our model, and then we can go in and directly call this predict method that Autolytics has implemented. So we just call predict, we can specify the source. So this can either be like an image, the source of our webcam. So right now I had to, I'm just specifying like the second index here because I have multiple cameras uh, connected to my computer. You might have to just like type in a zero here if you're on a laptop. And then we're going to visualize the results here as well. We're also going to return them, but this is basically like the only thing that we need. We just need to create an instance of a model and call the predict method with our specific source. And then we act like doing inference on our images from our webcam directly with these YOLO models. So this is the YOLO V8 model. Let's just go in and take a look at how we can set up the YOLO NAS model. It is also very easy. Right now, again, we just need to go in and pip install super gradients, and then we can go in and import the model from the super gradients uh, library and framework. Now we can go in, take the models here. So we basically just have a method for that. We can call the get method. And we again, we can specify the version of the YOLO model we want to use. So we have YOLO NAS, we have the small, we can also take the medium and large again. Here, we're just going to use the small one, but now we need to specify the weights that we want to use as well. So we're right now, we're going to use the pre-trained weights here from the Coco data set. So this is basically just the pre-trained weights as uh, in the case with the YOLO V8, um, with the old YOLO V8 model in here as well. But here we don't have to specify um, the acts like weights that we are pre-training our model on. So right down here, we can just go in and specify if we want to use CUDA. We also need to do that with the super gradients with YOLO NAS. We can go in and call model.eval, and then we have another method, which is called predict webcam. So this is exactly the same as YOLO V8. Here, we just have to like specify a couple of more lines. With the YOLO V8, it actually like goes in and checks for the CUDA itself automatically. So if CUDA is available, it will use that compared to the CPU. So in YOLO V8 here, create an instance, call predict. Here, we also need to like create an instance. Uh, we need to specify a bit more. And then we also need to like convert or push our model to our GPU if that is available. And then we can also call the predict the webcam down at the bottom. So let's now just run these programs. Let's see the results here. Let's take a look at it. I have a webcam here that we're going to use. And then we're basically just going to see the results. So here we can see I have now the webcam up running. We can see that we're running the YOLO NAS model. I'll just take it up here as well. We can see that we're detecting a person, a multiple persons here, um, also a chair. So this is not thresholded in any way or like no pro post processing. Um, so we can do like a bunch of other things for that. But here I'm basically just like moving it around. We have a clock here that is an incorrect prediction. Let me just turn it around here. We have a cop, mouse. We also have a mouse over to the right. Um, we should also have like a vase here that is not a vase. Uh, that is a speaker. We have my uh, phone up there. Does it detect that? 
Nope. We still have like a TV here. We can see the inference speed here is around 15 frames per second. So I'm not really sure what these models here. So I've been playing a bit around with it. Um, I've been using like both CUDA, uh, my Mac boot with MPS and also the CPU, but it still seems that, that these models here, they run a bit slower right now. I'm just like running it with their predict on webcam method. So we could actually like go in and export the model ourselves, try to write our own custom like inference script. So that might actually like speed up the process a bit more because then we, then we don't have to do like a lot of uh, additional processing. We can basically just like import a model as we do in any other model and then try to like create our own custom script. So we're definitely going to do that because I, I feel it's a bit odd that we only get like 21 frames per second here or like around 20 frames per seconds, depending on like how many detections we get in the frame because they actually like state that they're faster than the Yolo V8 model. And that is not the case um, in, in these situations here as I'm going to show you with the Yolo V8 model in just a second. So here we have like around 20 frames per second. So let's just close this one here. We can just hit Q on the keyboard and it will terminate. Let's now run and run the Yolo V8 one and then we can see how fast that one runs. Um, so I feel it's a bit it's a bit odd that we actually get so low inference speed on uh, on the Yolo NAS model. Here we can see the, the Yolo V8 model. We get around like eight to 10 uh, milliseconds here in the inference speed, which is ex which is the same as um, around 100 to 120 frames per second. So this is actually like way faster. And you can even see it when I'm moving the camera around, it is just way faster compared to the Yolo NAS model. So I'll definitely have to do a bit more research on that, try to create my own custom script and try to see if I can actually like improve the inference speed. Because again, they state that they're better both like performance wise, but also um, significantly like faster in inference speed. So here I'm just going to move it around. We can see that we still detect the different kind of like objects. We have the cup, mouse. We don't really get the mouse over here in the background. You can see my mouse over here. Uh, we don't really detect that as good as the YOLO NAS model. So I think the predictions are better with the YOLO NAS model, but again, uh, the inference speed, I, I didn't really like that. Um, I'll definitely have to play around with that more. So it's a really cool model. It just doesn't run as fast as I would expect. So I'll definitely have to play around with that. Uh, because then it is just such a cool model. Again, I'm running this on my 4090 uh, GPU from NVIDIA. So this is actually like a pretty good GPU and we would expect like crazy high frames per second as we also get here with the YOLO 8 model. So I'm just going to put the webcam down here again and then we're going to talk about like some of the pros, cons, advantages. When should you use YOLO V8 uh, versus YOLO NAS? So it acts like depends on your application. Again, just because we get a new version of the YOLO models, it doesn't really mean that we can't use the previous ones. We can still even use the YOLO v5 one. Um, so these models here, they're trained and they're benchmarked on like large data sets like the Coco data set and also some other benchmark data sets. And they only have like a slight improvement over the other models. So it really depends on your data set and application. So you should definitely test out the other models. Don't just go for YOLO NAS or like YOLO v8 um, because they're just the nearest models. You should definitely like test out uh, different ones. So we also have some other advantages with the YOLO V8 model still. Again here, we can run it easier. We can run it with fewer lines of code and it also runs significantly faster than the YOLO NAS model. I'll definitely check that out. I'll try to optimize the YOLO NAS model and also get it to run in our own custom script. And then also to talk about these advantages and disadvantages in different situations. So again, the YOLO 8 model is still really, really good because it has both update detection, it is fast, it is easy to use, and it also has segmentation, which we're using in a lot of applications and projects. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. I also have some courses here on my channel where we go over the YOLO V8 model for optic tracking. So we're actually like implementing trackers from scratch. I go over the theory behind all the trackers. So that is actually like a really interesting course where we go all the way from the theory, how we can use these um, YOLO V8 models and also how can we apply trackers on top of the YOLO V8 models. I also have some other courses with OpenCV with GPU support. So how can we utilize the GPU in computer vision applications and also YOLO V7 custom optic detection courses for different like types of inference, like how can we deploy them in our own custom Python scripts. So there's a lot of things going on. It is really interesting. I just hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.